Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Wimbledon. Now, this is a big, big game. If you have enjoyed this season, of course, drop a like on the video. That'd be superb. Yeah, this is a big game. The biggest game probably in this entire save. We're playing against Monaco um, at the Artemio Franci. I don't actually know what stadium that is. Um, who owns it? Oh, is it uh, Juventus' new stadium, maybe? Fiorentina. Wow, okay, we're playing at Fiorentina's stadium for the Champions League final. That's kind of cool. Anyway, um, yeah, enjoy the highlights of the Fulham game. We've got a couple of things to talk about before we get into the uh, game today, which is a massive one. So, yeah, enjoy the uh, Fulham highlights, and I'll join you guys in a sec for the Europa League final. That's ball. Bonnie's in there, and it's 1-0 to Wimbledon here at Craven Cottage. Christian Bonnie with the goal. Glad we put him into there, and we have the lead that could wrap up second spot for us. Well done, Gomez. Diallo. Farmer. Nice little one-touch stuff there. Salvi's through. And he scored. There we go. 2-0 to Wimbledon. Alessandro Salvi, 13th goal of the year. And we've wrapped up a good away win with a very weakened team. There we go. 2-0 to, uh, to Wimbledon. Rather. We are second in the league. 81 points. Great result. Great season. Right, guys, we're back. And we're not going to do a question of the day today because, obviously, you know, we've got a lot of stuff to go through. And this episode could be quite a long one anyway because I want to show you do squad report as well as uh, show you the other leagues. We're going to do a Bolton update too, if I can remember. So, yeah, we came second in the end. One point above Manchester City. Annoying thing happened. The moment that we'd uh, finished the league, we've got £37 million to spend next year, by the way, um, in the budgets and all that kind of jazz. Um, the moment that it finished and everything, and so the curtain comes down on the Premier League. First thing I see, Sam Farmer. Oh, I'd like to leave to join Manchester City. You mean that, that team that we just finished above? Yeah. Hmm, no? What is with that? I, I understand that they are a bigger club reputation-wise, but if you've just finished above them in the league, it really pisses me off that your players want to leave to join clubs that are worse than you in the league. It, uh, but that's just one of those things. Um, he listened to me when I did the whole, you won't get enough football crap. Uh, it's just annoying to see that. I thought by now we'd kind of be at a point where the only clubs that we'd be losing players to potentially are better sides than us, like Arsenal in this case, or teams like Barcelona, Bayern, Real Madrid and whatnot. Although Real Madrid have never actually put a bid in front of our players, I don't think, which is weird. So Fabio was top scorer, of course. Salvi was young player of the year, and Fabio was players player of the year, which was rather cool. Bellerin, of course, won player of the year due to his average rating, but it was great to see Fabio win a load of stuff. But he picked up a knock in the Fulham game, and it told me that he was out, but I gave him an injection to get him through the game. So I don't know what's going to go on now. We're going to have to have a little look. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to quickly talk about? No, that's fine. Right, so yeah, um, it's Monaco. It's us. It's big time. And it's like, what? It's... I don't understand. It... I gave him an injection so he could get through this. I might... Oh, is he allowed to start? Okay, that might be fine then. Because... Oh, basically, it said that, you know, it could extend the injury, but then it's the last game of the season, so I figured if we can use Fabio today, it'll be better. Annoyingly, it affected his morale, even though he's going to play in the game, which is really frustrating. Um, but it might be like a bit of, you know, uh, Diego Costa in the Champions League final. It might just be the end of us, but I just don't think we've got a choice. We need Fabio if we're going to have any chance. He's the top scorer, joint top scorer in this tournament. We need him to play well today, basically. So we're going to go with Baltan, Carlos, Fabio, despite the injury, of course, Salvi, Masek, Farmer, Achibar, Gomez, Boni, um, Manquillo, and Gafrascoli, who, again, in the last episode, he was a monster. So Kirk is not playing in this match. Annoying. The thing is, having Shane Williams out is a very, very frustrating factor. Planet is injured as well, which means, I think... Yeah, why on earth is Everton not on the bench? Um, oh, that's why. But then again, we've got really no choice in the matter. Um... So, uh, international duty as well, seriously. Okay, so let's just look at this bench. Otodo, Anderson, Diallo, Everton, Granger, Isla, and Mateus. Is there any area that could be strengthened? We've got a defender, we've got fullback, we've got uh, midfielder, we've got right-sided, left-sided striker. That's pretty much all we really need um, defensively. It says defensive positioning. Let's submit this team. A squad number we're given who? Oh, is it Otodo? Yeah, okay. Uh, he's only a youth player. Um, submit numbers. Let's do this. Now, we're going to put the game on extended highlights because it just makes things a little bit more interesting, I think. Um, keeps me on edge, that's for sure. Fabio is joint top scorer. He apparently might win it, though, because I think he's got more got more assists, or it might be because he's scored in, like, a less amount of time. It's that Roel Ibers guy, though. He looks astonished. Oh, we actually must have come through in a scout report. I don't remember. Oh, I must have seen him, but I just thought, well, he plays for Monaco. There's no hope in hell of us actually getting this guy. Um, although... You never know. I mean, £34 million value. I mean, we've got no chance of signing those types of players. Just plus the thing of the money he'd want. He'd probably want about £300 million a week, uh, which is probably what he's already on at Monaco, to be honest. Uh, okay, we're just going to jump straight into the game. I There's no point in prolonging this agony anymore. Let's go for it. Fabio, can he work through the injury that he's had to try and get us some ultimate glory? Now, I've got to be careful because, of course, whenever I do this, I always forget that I've got it on extended and we end up I end up reacting like we're about to concede a goal every time they come near us. I don't want to overreact too much in case the Fine Brothers sue me. So we've got to be careful on that one as well. Farmer now. Um, Masek. Oh, a good ball. Mankio into acres of space. Don't know why he played that back inside. Masek. He's got options himself. How has he still got the ball there? Oh, damn it. There's a guy called Robertson playing at um, left back for 
Monaco, which is interesting. Denuya, Ibers, watch out. I said, just stand off. Just don't let him too close to goal. Um, oh, now he's provided a bit of space. Benazi, watch out inside the fullback. That should be too deep. This is going to be a goal, isn't it? Oh, great clearance. Incredible, but I don't know if that's the end of this yet. Nag, and he's offside. Right, Sven Nag. Poor. Looked like we were going to do something at one end. Ended up nearly conceding at the other. Oh, God. Galfrascoli, ball in, headed away. Salvi brings it down. Go on, Salves. Have a shot. Farmer lets it go over him. That's a weird highlight. Oh, it's extended highlights. Christ on a bike, Matt. Hmm. I'm on edge. Can you tell? 25 minutes gone in the Europa League final. We are on edge. Now, obviously, because it's extended, it means I've got a little bit more chance to uh, assess situations before they are become terminal, which is quite useful. Um, oh, crap. Coman's through. Good block and cleared by Gomez. Salvi, look at the space of Fabio. He's peeled away lovely there, but he's really poor first touch. And I just wonder if he is going to be letting the side down a little bit today. And that wouldn't be his fault. It's not his fault he got a stubbed toe, which apparently requires a week and a half of recuperation from. But there you go. At least he didn't drop a bottle of aftershave on his foot. Um, end of the channel for Narg. Watch out. Ball in. Gomez clears it again. Hmm. They're getting in behind a little bit. They're getting in behind a little bit. And I just wonder if... Dropping one of the defenders to cover, particularly a pacey one like Gomez, might not be such a bad idea at this point. It could affect us a little bit, but I just wonder if having him drop a little deeper might be able to sweep around the back of them. Um, I don't want to drop too deep. Gafrascoli, go on side. Oh, he's gone for it! Oh my god, imagine if he'd scored a goal in the uh, Europa League final. That would have been quite some result. Salvi, 30 minutes gone, still nil-nil between us. Salvi now to Manquillo. Go on, son. Fabio has dropped very deep. Can he make a run now? Masek finds Farmer. Ah, it's a poor effort from Sammy. He, he's not the best long shoot specialist, that's for sure. Uh, nobody... Oh, no, we've hit the target once and they've not hit it at all. Right, let's take a little look at the analysis then. So, well, I mean, fairly long passes going down this right. This All the players down this right. Uh, so, firstly, we're going to concentrate on that. We're also going to do that as a sort of standard thing. And we'll take another little look at halftime and take a closer look and see where we can analyse this a bit further. Uh, but... So far, so good. Nil-nil in the Europa League final. It's all looking dandy. Has anyone had a really poor game? Fabio, 6.3. Like, I don't want to do it yet. Um, that's going to put a lot of pressure on them. I don't really want to do that. We'll just, yeah, just encourage them in the second half. They're not playing badly. They've probably slightly edged this game, but Monaco have still had some good chances. Uh, Gomez is having a lovely time, though. That's nice to see. Um, mm, Fabio, Fabio, Fabio. I do worry about him, though. I, that's the, the issue is... What else can we really look at at this point? Interceptions, maybe. Um, successful interceptions. How many have they made? 25. Um, generally from that right-hand side, missing a lot of interceptions out there as well. How about us? Are we missing many interceptions? We've missed nine, interestingly. Um, oh, no, we've missed four. What we're talking about. All again on this right-hand side. We've got Isla on the bench, and I do wonder in the second half if maybe completely switching things up and going down the left with Isla might not be such a bad idea. What about scoring opportunities for both teams? Uh, the only opportunity that's had from either team is theirs. They had a half chance. Uh, movement. What about any dribbling that they've done? They've had a lot of dribbles again on this right-hand side, and again we've been down this right-hand side again. Uh, mistakes, maybe? Anyone made any mistakes? We've made six, but no really... So they've had seven, and again it's, it's down this side. Um... Okay, so second half opportunity plan is that if we get to sort of 70 minutes and we're still not really creating anything, I might be switch, tempted to do a, a complete switcheroo, get Mateus on for Fabio, or maybe drop Fabio back and put Mateus up there, and then bring Eisler on for Baltam and go to the left-hand side and just completely try and catch them off guard a little bit. I'm not really sure at this point. It's just a little theory I'm working on in this game at the moment, is that maybe we could catch them off guard because all the players going down one wing, which means that, yes, we're getting chances down there, but so are they uh, because the ball is being so concentrated to that right-hand side of the pitch. Salvi's cross, ball in, Bonnie. Oh, Christian Bonnie's good header at goal. We've had three long shots as well, though, and that's an interesting one. Um, if we get to sort of 65, I might do the first switcheroo, which is to move Fabio back because I, I do feel like Fabio is still the key for this. He only needs that one opportunity. And I know he's not having the best game, but maybe if we pull him a little bit deeper, get him to a more shadow strikey approach and go with Mateus up top, you never know. Uh, an hour gone now, still no goals in the Europa League final. This is tense as all hell. Uh, at least in the other games we've played in these sort of levels, uh, we've had goals to keep us occupied. Baltam, can he dig a, sh dig a cross out? Ball in, headed away. Farmer brings it down. That's better. We're keeping the pressure on now. Get a little bit more possession. Masek, it's very, very tight in there. To Achibar now, can he find a cross? 
two players on him, goes back for Masek, brings it down, cuts inside. Go on, go on, Roman, have a shot. Ah, it's a poor effort again. It's difficult. Um, oh, straight away. Um, I'm just not sure at this point. Like, they're defending. There we go. Well done, Christian Bonnie. I really wish Fabio had come towards that. And I'm wondering if maybe getting him off as the first substitution might be the best approach because he's not done well. Oh, here we go. Fabio. Salvi. He's going to lose the ball here, isn't he? Oh, Masic does really well to win that back. It's very, very tight. We've got to be careful we don't look. Fabio's through. Yes! Sorry if you just saw my stomach. <laughs> this t-shirt's really short. Monaco nil, Wimbledon won, Fabio with the goal, and we lead in the Europa League final. It's happening, guys. Um, I don't know who was that passed through by, but I think Masek and Carlos... Carlos did a bit of his attacking playmaker type of situation. Or attacking advanced playmaker. I think that was what did it. Farmer drops it in. Uh, oh, look at that. Back heel. Carlos, what a beautiful little pass through. Fabio, first time finish. And it is 1-0 to Wimbledon in the Europa League final. We could be about to win our first ever major trophy. Right. Can't speak too soon. Carlos got the assist on that. It's. I still kind of feel like this move is a wise one to get Carlos off and Mateus on up top and get Fabio as a slightly deeper lying player in this one. We've got to be careful with those uh, situations as well. I just have a sneaky suspicion that Fabio dropping a little deeper, they might not be able to pick him up and he's done really well in these positions in the past. Shit, please don't concede from a corner. Ivar's, oh, 17 minutes to go. They've yet to hit the target at all today. Mateus on the edge of the box. Go on, Mateus. Oh, oh, it's 2-0 to Wimbledon. We're going to win the Europa League, guys. It's happening. What about that from Mateus? He's off the bench and he's scored what might be the goal that wraps this one up for us. Still 15 minutes to go. But look at this. Salvi picks him out. Mateus takes one touch and he's absolutely launched one. He's, well, he's not quite put that where the scissors live, but it's right in there in the bottom corner. And it is 2-0 to Wimbledon now. Monaco have yet to have a shot. Right, let's make that second change I was talking about now. Let's get Philip Eisler on for Baltimore, who's not had the smartest game. And Bonnie for Anderson, um, as I am, in, I'm now going to switch to a slightly deeper line now. That way Anderson and Gomez can just knock balls out of the air at every possible opportunity. So we're going to go slightly deeper, offside trap off, closing down less, more disciplined, slightly longer passing. Um, yeah... Um, just going to up the tempo slightly. That way we can get it out of the defence a little bit quicker in these sort of situations. And I think we should be able to see it over the line at this point. But again, it could all change if Monaco get themselves a chance. They only need one chance. They've had a couple of half chances today. They only need one good opportunity. And the longer we can go without giving them it, the better. I think... Oh, God. Come on. Come on, guys. You can do... Go for a goalie. Oh, yes! He's finally scored! In the oh my god, Martin Garfrascoli, the goalkeeper has scored in a Europa League final of all the times for him to do that. It's 3 0. We've beaten Monaco 3 0 in the Europa League final. What about that for a hit? He has absolutely battered that in, and we are going to win the Europa League, guys. I cannot believe he's going to have another go. Garfrascoli cleared away. De Neuer now gone. At least get the clean sheet to finish things off nicely. Get back. Why do they never run back quicker? Ball across the box there. Nag, and it's cleared by Manquillo to Fabio, and he's oh. Mm. Wow. Um, I'm glad we kept Fabio in and just... Oh, I can't believe it. We're actually going to do it. Masek is going to get red carded in the 92nd minute of the Europa League final. A little bit unnecessary, eh, Roman? Um, and that's him gone, which is annoying. It's, I think it's only his second ever red card for us and both of them have been in the Europa League. Um, well, we'll leave him on, but there we go. We've won the Europa League. I love the way that the players just dawdle off the pitch as if we've not done anything. They used to run towards the middle of the pitch. What happened? I, I don't understand. Uh, or is it because we got a red card? It just took all the shine off of it. There we go. We have won the Europa League. Fabio is the top scorer in the competition with 12 goals and the winner there. And my goodness, Mateus and Galfrascoli. What a couple of episodes he's had. Mistakes, chances, and a goal to finally cap off the season. What a perfect time for him to finally score a goal for us as well, guys. I cannot stress how awesome that is that he's actually managed to do that. That is outrageousness. Right, Um. so we've we've won the Europa League. Um. At the, I've never won the Europa League ever in playing FM before. So And to win it like that in a season where we've come second in the Premier League is outrageously nice. And I think next year, Champions League, I don't expect us to be challenging for it at all. Uh, I'd like to get out of the group maybe, but though it will depend, of course, on who we get. Though I'm hoping that a win of the Europa League will give us a really good coefficient going into that. But who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, there you can see, of course, Fabio uh, was the top scorer in the competition with 12 goals. That is outrageously good. Lovely old job. Right, so squad report time before we take a look at the other leagues. Uh, we'll obviously have the other episode later today coming up, of course. So Diallo, he's a decent player. He's like a solid backup. And I'm 
prepared to keep him around for that reason alone because he's still got a little bit more to improve he's got some decent mentals some decent stats i think he's good enough to keep around he's worth seven and a half million so if we did want to move him on there's plenty of opportunity there isla starting to fall off a little bit but i still think that with the player he is, he's a useful one to have around the team, and I feel like he'll still be fine for us until such time as someone else comes through. Maybe start to bring in Matteo Martin a little bit more. Everton, mm, he wants to leave, and I might just let him if we get a big enough bid for him, because I don't see any chance of him getting in front of Salvi now. He's not a good, he's not a, as good a player as Salvi, and he's older, and he's got less room to improve. So I feel like Everton, his time might have come to an end. Fabio, however, on the other hand, he's a monster. Uh, still no caps for Brazil. Someone asked me about that. He's still not got a single cap for Brazil. He's worth 37.5 million now. We've got to keep him in the summer now. He's going to be playing Champions League football for a team that have just won a European trophy. He has to. 118 goals and 197 games for us is very, very solid as well. Fabrizio, he will never, ever play for us because he just cannot get a work permit, which is a shame. But he's having a good time out on loan at Eupen. Sam Farmer, hopefully he won't leave uh, to go to Manchester City. Look at him. He's just improving hand over fist every single week. He's got a decent length contract. Might try and extend it again. Um if i can uh, so there we go garfrascoli what a man what a man what a mighty good man he's just a monster i, I love this lad already a couple of his only got six caps for argentina he's still only 23 there's room for him to get even better he's a wonderful wonderful man brian gomez probably our standout defender and he will prove that time and time again uh he's great in the air he's got pace he's got it all and i really do love this guy so much um so he's gonna be one of those ones that is gonna be sticking around for me i think we could win the champions league one day with him alan granger he's a backup at best and he, that's all he's really here for but that's fine by me uh adam cook i think he may move him on in the summer i do although the fact that he's english kind of helps so maybe not it, it will depend a lot on that mahalo langura um i just don't know if he's ever gonna get a chance to play for us not now that we've got um Oh, what's up, Jiggy? Javi Mankio, he's starting to decline a little bit as he is now 29 years old, but still, I, I feel like we need to look at someone to maybe replace him eventually, but I still feel like he's good enough for at least another year uh, playing at right back for us. Masek, what a man he is as well. Fantastic player. 19 counts for the Czech Republic. Brilliant. Superb. He is the man in that middle place for us. No doubt about that. Mateus, he's still got a long way to improve, but I feel like he is actually the one that's stepping up and showing that he can maybe do that. He scored a fair amount of goals this year. Um, well, 11. Uh, but that's not too bad, really. That, I'm pretty pleased with that overall. Uh, we've got someone on Juku who will uh, be leaving and joining Yotabor at the end of the year because I just didn't think that there was much room for him. And he's had, always had a bit of an attitude problem and he's never played that well for us. Planich, again, I may try and move him on because he just doesn't seem to have, doesn't seem to be cut out anymore Ramslar again he may move on too because he just isn't good enough at the moment we could probably still get a decent amount of money for him Salvi though what a player he has been this year he's had a phenomenal season everything he's done has been superb 27 and a half million pounds now he's only 20 still he's got two caps for Italy what a player he is Kevin Stoyle uh again we paid over the odds for him and I'm not sure but he's English so it's worth keeping him around Shane Williams I still feel like there's more to come from him and I hope that he can uh, he's got a hernia at the moment which is a bit poor but I think that next year he may see some more game time uh, definitely Achibar again he's just worth having around the squad he's such a fantastic young player he's still only 19 years old look at him like there he's a phenomenal player and he still gets a plenty a decent amount of game time played 29 times in the league so he can't complain about that Mark Anderson uh he will actually probably leave in the summer in the end he's played a long time for us nearly 200 appearances but i just don't think there was ever going to be any reason to keep him after this in ram baltam though what a man he is as well phenomenal player can play in so many positions as well i do want him to get confident there as well because i think he'd be an all right shadow striker with that 12 finishing and look at him he's so good 19 years old four caps again for france bishop i mean could improve maybe not bonnie i genuinely feel like will be our second big center back i think that he and gomez could be a perfect partnership at the back one day i genuinely do because bonnie for me is quality he's got a decent amount of pace he's not super quick but he's quick enough and he's got really good stats and he's improving and there looks to be a lot more to come from him so that's pleasing for me as well gonzalo bozzo i don't think we'll really see a lot more of him but that's fine carlos again he's a great player but i do wonder if maybe moving him on for massive money in the summer and then trying to bring in a, a quality shadow striker with the funds might not be such a bad idea because i just don't think he quite fits this system very well with that seven finishing unfortunately uh next up aaron cresswell will um i might actually terminate his contract to try and sell him on for some money because he's never going to play for us again is he salvatore de girolamo will leave as well uh, he's been at the club a long time but never really played it i think he played Played one game for us in the league in his entire career. Diallo went back to Diallo. So let's take a quick gander at the... Uh, let's see what we're doing here. Let's take a quick gander at the... Oh, hello. What's all this stuff here? Give him more money. We're looking a lot better financially now as well, which is... Fabio's going to be out for a little while, which is fine. Um, given lots of money. Let's just take a look at our financial situation. Um, 20 million in the bank now, which is much more like it. I'm thinking with that alone, we should be okay for the financial... Someone said that as long as we're making profit, we shouldn't get a points deduction on the wage thing. So that's good. And maybe it was just because of the time we were losing. Let's just take a quick gander of finances, actually, while we're here. Uh, 
Oh, that's not the right one at all. What are you doing, Matt? Uh, oh, we're fine now. Okay, that's fine. Phew, I was getting a little bit worried on that one. Right, let's quickly take a look at the other divisions while we're around. Uh, so, Skybet Championship. Watford are promoted. They beat Brentford in the playoff final. Brentford were actually in um, second when I last saw them, and they've got so unlucky there, losing out on by a single goal to Cardiff. So Sunderland and Cardiff up. Down go Sheffield Wednesday, Burnley and um, Wolves. That's a surprise, actually. Uh, McDonald's were in those positions, but they actually have climbed themselves out of it, which is interesting. Uh, League One, the playoff final was won by... Oh, it's not been played yet. Southend and Brighton have yet to play. Millwall and Luton go back up to the championship. Accrington, Preston, Wickham and Blackpool go down. You want to see what Bolton are doing, I know. Um, Yeovil Town are up to League One now after beating Cambridge United in the playoff final. Plymouth, Hartlepool and Shrewsbury go up with them. Down go Forest Green Rovers and Grimsby Town. Into the conference now we go for uh, Alfreton Town are up to the Premier League. Uh, Premier League to the Football League. Burton with 101 points win the conference. Alfreton go up with them. Down go uh, Hensford, uh, Southport, FC Halifax and Eastleigh, interestingly. And now what you've all been waiting for, Bolton. They were 12th the last time I checked. AFC filed go up to the conference and Bolton finish in 11th spot in conference north. Um, are they building? Are they building? Oh, at some point, I probably might at the end of this save, um, if you guys want, put up a version of this save from Bolton at their very lowest so like at the start of this season. I might put up a version of that so you guys can manage Bolton like that if you guys want to see that. Um, do let me know if you do want actually to see that as well. And conference south, in case you guys are interested, of course, we've got Hemel Hempstead coming up uh, uh, by beating Maidstone. Oxford City go up with them as well. Bishop Stortford, no, one of my local sides. And Dulwich Hamlet go down with Brack as well um while we're here someone said they wanted to see the scottish league so i've decided you know what scottish friends let's take a little gander and see how things are dwanning in the scottish league oh that's the actual country itself rather than the division labbrook's premier league here's how we do queen of the south and hamilton are in the relegation playoff final celtic and right celtic win the league for the umpteenth time ever uh down goes st Mirren and hamilton uh and yeah basically i mean that that's i'm not going to go through too many because otherwise we'll be here all day so guys We've done it. We actually did it. We've won the Europa League by three goals to the level of Monaco. What a fantastic game that was in all aspects. Um, obviously, we'll have later tonight the analysis episode, and I cannot wait to start digging into some of these stats. I really can't. It's going to be very entertaining and very interesting to see what's actually been going on. And, of course, join us in tomorrow's episode where we'll be playing first episode, uh, first fixture of the season in the Premier League because it looks like we won't be into the Champions League uh, until the group stages. So it will be a Premier League tie. I want to try and strengthen that defence as much as I can, but we'll have to see and maybe we can find another shadow striker to really take this team to the next level next year and have a closer run at the title and see how we can go in the Champions League. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, of course, drop a like on it. The fact that we've won the Europa League. If we get 600, that'd be magnificent. And I'll join you guys tomorrow for that. And I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.